Okay, so I'm just going to make a quick material. Uh, we're going to go over uh, this little guy here. We're going to assume that you guys know Crazy Bump, so I'm in a program called XN View where I can actually uh, view different images and textures and double click to pull them up. And I'm just going to select it. Control C to copy it. And just use Crazy Bump. Open. Paste height map. Actually, I'm just going to paste photograph because I want all the, the diffuse and everything. If I did it from a height map, it wouldn't even ask me this part, but this is fine. And yeah. yeah. That's about that. Uh, let's see what that looks like as a box. Now, if you really want to see this guy tile. Hit the plus in Crazy Bump. And of course, you can fine tune. depending on how much or how little you want. Now I'm going to tile this uh, inside of the engine. Ideally this would be about a 1K texture and then I could get some variety, but I just want to show you essentially how we could work with something like this. Uh, I do love using a program, I'm going to show it to you later, uh, called Substance to generate some different things, but for right now we'll just use this and what I want to do is we could see there's a displacement map, an occlusion, ambient occlusion map. Um, and of course, you can always adjust um, how much or how little of the ambient occlusion you're getting. Say something like or something like that. Showing ambient occlusion now. And that was just right through here, turning that on. Okay. And for what I'm doing right now, I think that'll be alright. Nothing major, we're just making a quick thing. So I have this. Um, and ideally, uh, this is an older version, I think the newer ones have it, because once again, I've been using a program actually called Bitmap to Material, which is really awesome, uh, and gives you like roughness and all that, but we'll be able to work with this still, it'll still be okay. So, I'm just going to go in, I will save, uh, not just all, you know, the normal map, but all these out. And uh, let's say I'm just going to make a folder, call it one, um, uh, let's just call it uh, Pavement 2. And I'm actually going to save this right now as a BMP, believe it or not. changed its name. Pavement 2. So it spit all those out, which means I can close this up. And now I can actually go to um, course materials. And we see I have uh, these different maps, and it abbreviates them. Uh, 
and I'll go back into my textures folder grab all these guys pull it right on in there they are save all down here just to make sure that if something happens it crashes I still have them and I'm gonna go back to that uh, material that I had made which I kind of clear it out and I'm just gonna take these materials these textures and pull them on in And I just kind of shift selected those and I'm just going to drag them right in. Now later on we'll talk about embedding textures so I don't have all these, I'm not using all these textures. Ideally uh, I would start embedding the monochromatic ones so that I don't have to do it this way. But I just want to show you just so you can see because there are times you are going to. Um, displacement map we'll put you aside uh, we'll use him for something later that I'll show you uh, this one is my spec we're going to put it someplace else there's the color which is also the base color there's that not very special looking the normal map will plug you in Ambient occlusion. That added a little depth. Isn't that nice? Now, this is interesting because if I plug, uh, uh, I have a few options metallic, specular, roughness. That's inside of the metallic. And I just alt left mouse click to get rid of it. That's what it looks like in the specular. You could put the same thing into multiple channels. Now in the roughness, that's pretty rough. But we can see how cool that is, how that actually is working really well. Um, now the problem is, is that this needs to be tiled. Hold down U left mouse button, uh, click the left mouse button while you're holding down the letter U on your keyboard and it pops up the texture coordinate which allows us to tile these and you remember this probably from Maya uh, and Unreal if you've been inside, of, you know, I know you've been inside of here but what I'm going to show you is actually a way of tiling it. Um, I'm going to hold down the letter M for multiply. And I'm just going to drag this into the A channel. And I'm hold down number one on the top keyboard, left mouse, and makes it constant. So I could plug that into B. And I want to give this a value of one to say it's doing it at least once. All right. And now I'm just going to use this instead of just plugging the texture coordinate into the UVs, which is what's going to tile it. Um, I'm running it through this and that is because of two reasons. One, um, I want to be able to just hit one of these and just say I want to tile it four times. Boom. And now it's tiled four times. But I also am going to want to make what's called an instance material later. And that means I'd be able to uh, convert this into what's called a parameter. Anytime, later on you're going to see things called parameters. And anytime you see that, it typically means it's giving you the capability of controlling something from outside. In other words, uh, when I have parameters, I can make an instance material, a, a duplicate of it. 
and then control it through the instance uh, or have the instance controlled with just little controls that update automatically. Um, this looks this doesn't look too bad so far. It's not tweaked out yet. We would want this grout darker and things like that. But just getting used to it, just bringing in your own materials, we'll get to the advanced stuff later on this week. Um, so what we're dealing with right now, this is just a specular. We'll talk more about uh, the metallic and the roughness uh, later on. And you still could put a constant into these and adjust them. And we'll talk about like how you would fine tune that because this is where you have to start to really break it down. But plugging them in, making this little controller, anytime I have a constant and I convert it, right click convert to parameter. So I, let me undo that, control Z. Here's a constant, I put that in with a one enter then plugged it into the multiply, which was an M enter. I select the constant, right click, convert to parameter. You see it says none. And I'll just call it tiling and hit save. Now I can go in and anytime I change that, it's going to change all of these guys. Why is that cool? Well, uh, it allows me to make an instance uh, parameter, which I'm not going to do yet, but I will assign this material just so you can see what it looks like. So let's go, go to my materials, select this surface and then just assign it. There's my material I just made. Boop. Or I could just drag it onto there. And it'll take a second for it to update. There it is. Problem with it, of course, it is ginormous, isn't it? And that would mean that we would have to go in and tell this to tile way more than four times. At 24 times, we could see how that is. It looks better. It's still big, but it's much better than what it was. And this is also why you would have wanted a, uh, a texture that was tiled already and had more variety to it because this is actually increasing um, the density of that texture on the surface and we can talk about that too a little later. But just getting it in there, so what did we do? We brought in those textures, we plugged them in, we created a uh, texture coordinate, hook these guys up. This is the color or diffuse map. We've temporarily plugged this one into the specular. The really bright blue and weird red, and this is always the normal map. Sometimes it's not quite that saturated looking. And then the black and white one spit out of um, Crazy Bump has OCC at the end, and that's for ambient occlusion, and you plug that right into there. The ambient occlusion faking um, generic lighting and darkening certain areas to try and give it more depth. As long as I let, let I tell you what, I'll give you a little quick treat and then we'll call it a day. If I hold down the letter B and I put in a bump offset, let's say I take the red channel from this image and put it into the height. And then this multiply, 
I'm just going to plug into the coordinates of the bump offset. And into this UV texture sample. And that's all great and well. I just haven't plugged this into anything. This bump offset, this is the weird part. And you can always grab all these guys and just move them. Oops, jinkies. Grab all these guys and move them back so we can organize them a little bit more. But what I would do is I would have this guy go into the UVs. The UVs, which you learned last class, which are controlling how the textures are working. And when I plug them into all of these other ones, and hit save. the height ratio a bit. Looks a little too much, but if we hit apply, it'll temporarily update in here. And it's thinking there, right? Do you notice this? How that's lifting up. We have it too much, but We'll talk about this. I just wanted to show you what that was, which is the bump offset. This is how you'd actually add distortion. We're going to do one that's much better than this. I just kind of threw it in because I wanted to see what it would look like. And I'm like, eh, could be better, could be worse. I'd, I'd prefer something a little different. We'll pick something a little bit better, like uh, to work with. But it actually uh, starts to make it uh, look more like there's actual uh, mesh that has been carved in a little bit more. We'll just pick that was a quick texture. We'll pick one that's a little bit beefier. But if you look, you can see there's some depth to that. Look at how it's kind of shifting a little bit. Alrighty, so let's stop it right here. Um, for right now, I want you guys to pick uh, a material to make. It could be wood planks, it could be brick, it could be something where you can start to work and make a material that's going to plug in.